how do you as an adult, I mean, you mentioned a couple of physics books in, in the, the start of the, the interview here. How do you as an adult go about learning new subjects, you specifically? In- yeah, mostly I just stay on the basics. So even when I'm learning physics uh, or science, uh, I'm sticking to the basics. Uh, so I'll read concepts for fun, but uh, I'm more likely to you know, do something that is arithmetic in it than calculus. I'm not going to be a great physicist at this point, maybe in the next lifetime or when my kid will do it. Um, but it's too late for me. So I, I have to stick to what I enjoy. And what I love about science is uh, mathematics is the language of nature. Uh, science is, to me, is a study of truth. Um, it is the only true discipline because it makes falsifiable predictions and actually changes the world. Um, and applied science becomes technology and technology is what separates us from the animals and allows us to have things like cell phones and houses and cars and heat and electricity. Um, so science to me is a study of truth and mathematics is the language of science and nature. Um, so it, in that sense, I'm not religious, but it, I'm spiritual. And to me, that is the most devotional thing that I could do to study the laws of the universe. Um, and so the same kick that, um, you know, some guy might get out of being in Mecca or Medina and, you know, bowing to, um, you know, the prophet, Uh, I get that same feeling of awe uh, and that same uh, small sense of self when I study science. Um, So for me, it's, uh, you know, it's it's unparalleled and I'd rather stay at the basics um, and start at the, and and this is the beauty of reading. So one thing I don't like to do, by the way, when I do my books on the Kindle, I skip two thirds of them. And the reason I skip two thirds of them is because they're kind of embarrassing. They won't sound like good books to read. They'll sound like trivial or silly or uh, whatever, but who cares? I mean, I don't have to tell everybody everything I read. I read all kinds of stuff that other people consider junk or even reprehensible. I read all kinds of stuff that I disagree with because it's a mind bender. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I found myself in some random dark hole in Twitter the other day where I was reading this guy's tweets. I was like, wow, he's really smart. That is really interesting. I was very clever. I was like, wait a minute, this guy's a full-blown white supremacist. I mean, he's not even like mildly a white supremacist. He just thinks like everyone in the white race should be gone and people like me shouldn't be allowed on the streets. But it was still fascinating. And he's still really smart. And I kept reading it. And I read it and read it and read it. And after a while, I built up my own sense of his coherent view of the world and where he was coming from. But to do that, I couldn't have judged too much. And I'm certainly not going to go around bragging to my friend, hey, I learned this from a white supremacist the other day, right? So to some level, you almost have to read the stuff you're reading because you're into it. And that's it. it, it you, you don't need any other reason. There's no, there's no mission here to accomplish. Yeah, if you Just read, read because you enjoy it. If you read what everybody else is reading, I mean, there's wisdom that you're going to think what everybody else is thinking. So you need the diversity and almost like an index fund approach, right? Where you're going to catch the winners, but you can't really identify a lot of them beforehand. That They're going to change you as a person because so much of that is contextual. Yeah, I think almost everything that people read these days is designed for social approval. Mm. Um, you know, all the bestsellers are about social approval and social conditioning. Um, if you really want it to be successful, happy, blah, 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 all those external metrics, you're looking for a non-average outcome. And so you can't be reading the average thing, to your point. Um, and th- all these things are actually as old as the hills. You could go read Adam Smith and the Wealth of Nations. You could go read Benjamin Franklin and his aphorisms and understand how to live your life. You could read uh, Charlie Munger. You could read You could read Charles Darwin and understand evolution of the source. You could read Watson and Crick and understand the structure of double helix and DNA. But instead, what we choose to read are just, uh, you know, whatever's number one at the airport bestseller or whatever our friends are reading. Or we read, I know people who have read a hundred regurgitated books of evolution and they've never read Darwin. (laughs) Or they've read, they've got, or or think of the number of macroeconomists and they're out there. I think there's most of them who have read tons of treatises in economics, but haven't read any Adam Smith, Yeah, <laughs> right? So it, it, at some level, you're doing it for social approval. You're doing it to fit in with the other monkeys. You're fitting to get along with a herd. Um, but that's not where the returns are in life. The returns in life are being out of the herd. Social approval inside inside the herd. So if you want social approval, definitely go read what the herd is reading. Um, but it takes a level of contrarianism and saying, nope, I'm just going to do my own thing regardless of the social outcome. Um, to learn anything I think that's interesting. Do, do you think there's some sort of lost aversion there? Because once you diverge, you, you're pushing out, say there's a Gaussian distribution, you're pushing out to one of the tails. And if you feel that you're going to lose out on that, you'd rather just stay in the middle. 
if there's a chance that you're not going to be in the in the fat tail for a positive? Uh, absolutely. I think that's why the smartest and most successful people I know started out as losers. Um, if you view yourself as a loser, as someone who's been cast up by society and has no role in normal society, then you will do your own thing and you're much more likely to find a winning path. So it, it helps to just start up by saying, oh, I'm never going to be popular. I'm never going to be accepted. I'm already a loser. I'm not going to get what all the other kids have. I'm just got to be happy to be me. Yeah, uh, I think that's true. Um, when you're reading, do you just read and it sticks in your head or, or is it more like you take notes? Do you have a system for how you keep track of that or review them? I'm both lazy and I'm really focused on being present. So I think taking notes is the same as taking photos when you're on a trip. All it's doing is taking you out of the moment. Uh, and then who really sits there, you know, uh, years later and goes back and looks at all their trip photos and gets nostalgic, just go take your next trip. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so I, I just don't believe in anything from the past, anything, no memories, no regrets, no people, no trips, nothing. Cause a, a lot of our unhappiness also comes from comparing things from the past to the present. First time you saw a sunset, it was amazing. It was jaw dropping. You forgot yourself. The second time you saw it, it was cool. You know, the hundred time you say it's nothing. The thousandth time you're saying, and someone shows you a sunset, you're like, well, actually, I saw this one sunset in Mexico this time. That was really cool. You're not even there. So I, I just don't believe in clinging too much to memories. And that includes in reading. So I, I do highlight, I catch myself doing that, but I do it more because it's just kind of a way of rereading and rereading that particular paragraph mm. at that moment in time. Uh, and then once in a blue moon for my especially favorite books, I'll want to reread the book, but I'll be short on time. So I'll just reread the highlighted passages until something catches my eye and then I get sucked back into the book. But the reality is I could stop highlighting tomorrow and it would make no difference. And note taking is even, I think, uh, harder than that. So I, I, I do not take notes, but everyone's brain works differently. You know, some people love to take notes. Actually, my note taking is Twitter. <laughs> so yeah. what I do is I, I read and read and read. And if I have some fundamental aha insight or concept, then what I like about Twitter is it forces me to distill that into 140 characters. Uh, and then I try and put it out there as an aphorism. Uh, and then I get attacked by all kinds of random people and they point at all kinds of obvious exceptions and jump down my throat. And I'm like, why did I do this again? <laughs> and then I go into hiding for a while. You have one of the most thoughtful Twitter feeds um, that I know of. So uh, I, don't, I, don't, I hope nobody jumps down your throat too bad there. Thank you. Yeah. When you first pick up a book, are you skimming for something interesting? Like, how do you go about reading it? Or do you just flip to a random page and start reading? What's your process for that? Yeah, I'll start at the beginning, but I'll move fast. So if it's not interesting, I'll just start flipping ahead or I'll start skimming or speed reading. Uh, if it doesn't grab my attention within the first chapter in a meaningfully positive way, I'll either drop the book or I'll skip ahead a few chapters. Um, I don't believe in delayed gratification when there's an infinite number of books out there to read. There's so many great books yeah. and there are so many of them that are so well written that, you know, I just can't spend my time on these. Um, one thing I will do though, is if I find that early on in the book, the author starts making statements that I think are just factually untrue and one should always be open to new ideas. But if they're starting to make contradictions where the epistemological load of acknowledging that contradiction sorry to use that 50 cent word but the, just the, just i would have to revisit my entire lifetime of learning and undo it and yes, start over yes gravity uh, to does accept not that exist truth. Yeah. yeah exactly or like you know i had a very I had a conversation recently with a guy who sounded really really smart and was throwing all kinds of science at me and my head was spinning and then he basically said and as we know you know thermodynamics isn't really true <laughs> that was the point at which I was like, okay, I got to discard everything you just said because thermodynamics is fundamental. <laughs> right? That's what the undo you button is for, right? Yeah, that thermodynamics is not even a theory. It's a law. Yeah. <laughs> it comes from the mathematics. So if you want to throw that out, then we just have to, we have no basis for conversation. So if I find something like that in a book where someone says, oh, yes, I cleared my mind and I watched my thought process, and then I was able to levitate then I have to put the book down <laughs> because now I don't know what in here is true and what in here is false. Basically what I'm looking for is, is the author knowingly lying or completely deluded? Right. And if they are, then I, I can't fill my brain with that junk because I can't separate uh, truth from, uh, from fiction. Um, so generally I'll, I'll, I'll skim, I'll, I'll fast forward. I'll try and find a part that catches me. Usually though, what happens in most books though, is most books have one point to make. Uh, and obviously, this is nonfiction. I'm not talking about fiction, but they have one point to make. 
they make it and then they give you example after example after yeah. example after example and they apply it to explain everything in the world and you once i feel like i've gotten the gist of it i, I feel very comfortable putting the book down um so there's a lot of these uh what i would call like pseudoscience bestsellers uh, that are all over, you know, that everyone's always reading. And people are like, oh, did you read this book? And I always say yes, but the reality is I read maybe two chapters of it, but I got the yeah. gist.